TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, and if we do a live and if you happen to miss it, this is where all the highlights will be. This channel is down in the description, along with the Patreon, man, Patreon information. I understand that everybody's going through, you know, money problems, but you know, if you can, and you want to help the channel out and keep it like, so I can be doing this all day, you know, just go sub up, man. Appreciate that. Um, and we also got the discord down below, man. That's where you can drop your requests. Now I seen this one. I know you know by the title, you see it. It's on, it's history. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to try. This is Chicago's most dangerous jail complex, Cook County. Now, the thing about Cook County is it's in the middle of the, it's in the city, 26 in California. Um, it's in a King neighborhood. Now, if y'all don't know, it's in a gang, and it's a heavily gang area. The Latin Kings, right here. They're right there. <laughs> Soon as you get out, you in a Latin you in a Latin King neighborhood. Now, if you now if you African American and you get out of jail and you're young and you look a certain type of way and you get out in this area, them kings they be looking at you. they definitely be looking at you. Like you could get out of this jail on a Monday morning after you went to your sentencing or whatever you got bail blah blah blah, and you can definitely get beat up or shot. Soon as you walk out, you can get beat up or shot. You better have it. If you get out of this jail, you better have your ride waiting on you outside at the gate. You better not have to walk to the bus. You better not have to walk to the McDonald's on the corner. You better not have to do none of that. You want your ride to be right there on time waiting for you. You don't want to have to wait for your ride. You want your ride waiting on you because you will get beat up. You will get jumped. You will get G-checked. You probably, there's some, I remember the story when somebody got out of jail, literally they walked down the street, they got out of jail, walked down the street, got shot, killed. I'm talking instantly. So this is what you got to deal with. This is the, they got lifers in here, they got murderers in here, they got people that's been in jail, in this jail for 10, 12 years. Still ain't went to prison yet, but they locked in the county jail. That's what's so bad about this jail. It's, it's real people doing real time in here. Stuff. Let's get into this though, man. Let me hear this. 96 acres filled with thousands of America's most dangerous criminals. With a daily population of around 9,000 inmates, Cook County is at times the most- They not lying. Look at them saying, look right here. This is the houses. You got to be, a, you got to be, oh, man, you better be safe getting up out of this jail. I'm, I'm not lying. <laughs> crowded jail in the entire country. Most people don't even realize that the land it stands upon has served as a home to the accused since just after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Processing infamous degenerates such as John Wayne Gacy or playing its part in controversial cases. This part, that's planes. <laughs> They made, they made this plans look terrible. This is like the Chicago 7. But what's inside of this complex? And why is it one of the state's first and only facilities to use the electric chair? And with well over a century of history, I didn't know that. What are its secrets? Today we discover Chicago. Oh, yeah, 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 buddy. Here it go. Here it go. I'm telling you, bro, right here. Look, he on the phone calling his ride. He waiting. Please come get me. I'm in the wrong neighborhood. Please. Chicago's Cook County Jail. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. Struggle with crime. For death. I got homies that been in there. <laughs> we had to go pick them up immediately. Decades, we have heard about Chicago's struggle with crime. From the prohibition days when Al Capone was rumored to smuggle his illicit products in hidden tunnels, to the daily drama that unfolds in the city's south side, under the ruins of its crumbling post-industrial architecture. The tale of Cook County Jail was implicated all throughout, but it started much earlier than you might expect, at a time when the embers of the Great Chicago Fire were still glowing. 
The year was 1871. Oh, we going back in history? Okay. Put my teacher hat on. Fix my green screen real quick. According to historical records, the population was approximately 334,000 people in Chicago at that time. This was a significant increase from just a few decades earlier when the city had been a small trading post on the shores of Lake Michigan. The growth in Chicago during the mid-1800s was partly driven by its strategic location as a transportation hub. And See, this is why it reminds me of Liverpool so much. If y'all ever wonder why I got such a connection to Liverpool, it's like almost the same sister situation. It's expanding industrial and commercial sectors. However, the city's rapid growth also led to several social and economic challenges, including overcrowding, pollution, and political corruption. Issues that eventually came to head around the time of the Great Chicago Fire, which destroyed much of the city and right, forced its residents to rebuild from scratch. Listen, listen. Y'all see our new mayor in Chicago? Everybody trying to get up out of Chicago now. This tragic fire also allowed for the city to have a hard reset of sorts. I know Low key, sometimes I be thinking the Chicago fire was dead ass on purpose. Exactly like what he just said. They wanted a hard reset. Yeah. That also applied to crime and corrections. You see, in the mid 19th century, Chicago's jail system was relatively primitive and often inadequate to meet the needs of its growing population. The city's first jail was hardly more than a small log cabin structure built in 1835. It was quickly outgrown as the population expanded. By the 1850s, the jail was housed in a larger brick building on the corner of Dearborn and Illinois Street. Despite its larger size, Dearborn and Illinois. Damn, wait a minute. <laughs> this, oh, this building is still here, I think. Dearborn and Illinois. Dear... Huh. I'm trying to remember what this building does now. Okay. The jail was often overcrowded and inhumane. Inmates were housed in cramped cells with little ventilation and were often forced to share bedding and other necessities. The earlier jail lacked adequate sanitation facilities, which led to the spread of disease and illness among inmates. There were also frequent complaints of mistreatment and abuse by jail officials, including physical violence and neglect. As the city continued to grow and its criminal justice system became more complex, calls for reform of the jail system grew louder. So in the late 1800s, the city began investing in new, modern jail facilities designed to be more humane and efficient. This included the construction of the new Cook County Jail, which was a significant step forward in developing the city's correctional system. In 1871, offenders of serious crimes were held at the court and jail on Hubbard Street before being sent to the state prison. Surprisingly, by this time, Illinois already had several massive state I used to work on Hubbard Street. Uh, I used to work on Hubbard and Illinois. The centuries. It's like Dearborn, Dearborn and Illinois is right next to Hubbard and Illinois. That's what I'm trying to think. Like, is that building still there? Including the Joliet Correctional Center, which you may recall from the Blues Brothers movie or hit show. This, this, this jail is a museum now. It's not a jail anymore. It's a break. museum. This might be a topic for an upcoming video. If you agree, hit that subscribe and like button. Anyhow, once the accused became the convicted, they were moved from jail to a state prison with transportation via a special train for inmates. Offenders of less serious crimes were held at the city's so-called Bridewell at Polk and Wells as they awaited trial. However, after the Great Fire, that location was moved to the corner of 26th and California and renamed. Hey, I told y'all, 26th and California, Polk and Wells, the buildings over there is abandoned, ain't they? It's a housing over there. The Chicago move. House of Corrections, perhaps marking the beginning of what we now call Cook County Jail. The Polk and Wells, Polk and Wells, that's, that's, that's more west. Polk is west. We got good food over there. Damn, I'm hungry, man. All right. Courts were initially skeptical about moving their jail so far away from downtown Chicago. So the very first inmates to be held at the location of today's... The federal building is still downtown. Cook County. 
County were children as young as seven and female offenders who were housed in isolation. This original inmate population of 419 in 1871 grew to 3,200 by the Roaring Twenties, according to cookcountysheriff.org, making this jail the largest concentration of individuals in custody in the free world at the time. For a time, the county balanced its inmate population by operating multiple jails and promptly sending sentenced inmates off to penitentiary. But in the mid-1950s, promptly sending sentenced Dearborn and Randolph, Chicago always been busting, huh? Sentenced inmates off to penitentiary. But in the mid-1950s, courts began county sentencing, which was typically a five-year sentence, meaning that at times the inmate population could double. Additionally, death row housing was shifted from state to county, which shifted responsibility. See what I'm saying? That's why the county so the county be different in Chicago. Look at that got crate. They got real inmates in there, like doing real, real time, and it's still like that to this day. And some rather complex jail management necessities. The entire complex was overcrowded, unorganized, and dangerous, with deteriorating conditions that called for criminal justice reform. Hence, the state legislator answered by voting to merge the county and city jails into one disciplinary authority. After 40 years of functioning independently, the Department of Corrections combined staff and individuals in custody into one streamlined entity. And this was the birth of the Cook County Jail as we know it today. So let's say that, hypothetically, you get involved in some shenanigans during your visit to Chicago. Hey, don't do it. <laughs> you gonna go somewhere you don't wanna go. Cook County is, hey man, I'm t hey listen. That's the worst county jail that you could possibly be in, I'm telling you. The cops catch you? Because first of all, it's definitely all gangland, right? 2020, 2023, it's all you, every, it's cutting the gangs. You know, when you go to state, it's cutting the race, but when you, then you can section off into your gangs. But when it's, when it's right now in the county, you better go with your gang. BDs hang with the BDs, GDs hang with the GDs, some hang together. Bloods in there, some bloods. There's, um, you know, you got your Caucasian people that are in gangs, they hang together like like kings in there together. It's real gangy in there. You get locked up in Cook County. What might you expect once inside? Well, let's have a look. After getting picked up by Chicago PD, the intake process at Cook County Jail in Chicago can vary depending on the individual circumstances of the inmate being processed. However, generally speaking, the intake process involves the following steps. First, there's identification and registration. When inmates arrive at Cook County Jail, Hold on, yeah. they're required to provide their personal information, including their full name, date of birth, and other identifying information. They're also photographed and fingerprinted, and then there are the medical and mental health screenings. The inmate will undergo a medical and mental health screening to assess any medical conditions or mental health issues that need immediate attention. The inmate will receive any necessary medical treatment, medication, or referrals to specialists as warranted. This is followed up by a property and contraband search as all inmates' personal property is inventoried and any prohibited items are confiscated. This includes items such as drugs, weapons, and cell phones. Finally, there is housing assignment. The inmate will be assigned to a housing unit based on their gender, age, and security level. A little bit later, they'll have orientation where inmates receive an exposure that outlines the jail's rules and regulations, including visitation, mail, and phone policies. Overall, the intake process at Cook County Jail can take several hours to complete. This process ensures inmates I feel like the intake process is pretty standard to everybody's jail, even in other places. And staff safety and security while providing necessary medical and mental health care. However, once an inmate is all checked in, the reality they face might be very different from the theory. According to a dated yet interesting report from 2008, That was deep. The reality might be different than the theory. 
You're damn right it's different in there. Conducted by the Civil Rights Division of the United States Department of Justice, the Eighth Amendment right of inmates has been systematically violated. Although, as a non-criminal, you might not care. However, if you ever found yourself in jail, an amendment protecting you against excessive bail, excessive fines, or cruel and unusual punishment... Oh yeah, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. ...seem essential. Especially since, when you're in jail, you haven't even been proven guilty yet. And it's perfectly possible that innocent... Bro, it's people sitting in this jail right now, w awaiting their trial. Their trial has been set for two years in the future. Keep getting pushed back, keep getting pushed back, keep getting weighed, keep getting motion, keep getting this, need more of this. They're sitting in there because they can't make bail. This is why they did that thing. This is why they did the thing for... um in Chicago, where they call it the purge law, where if you do certain crimes, they don't they don't bail you, they just let you go. Because it's overcrowded in there. But, but, but you know what I'm saying? There's so many people in there. Like people were sit, people couldn't make bail and would sit for two years and then be innocent. You get what I'm saying? Like innocent men occasionally find their way into the system. With that in mind, the report recalled systematic beatings by corrections officers, poor food quality, inmates sleeping on overcrowded cell floors, rodent infestation, and injury by rat bites on sleeping inmates. There was also violation of privacy during multiple invasive strip searches, failure to provide adequate medical care, painful mandatory tests for male STDs, unnecessarily long waiting times for discharge upon payment of bond, completion of sentence or charges being dropped. According to humantollofjail.org, 35% of the jail population is mentally ill. With state asylums widely being closed, treatment unfolds in the jail itself. Now, don't get me wrong. You get out of jail and, and, you, and you feel brave, you go get you some good food. You can go get you an elote. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We gonna get you some tacos. That's the best in the city, but it come with a price. <laughs> you better get out. I'm telling you, you better get out of jail at six a.m. Don't get out at noon. The king's gonna be on your ass if you get out at noon. You y'all think I'm playing? Like you be get you you think okay? Whoo! I'm finally out of this jail, man. I've been in here two three years. Damn! I'm finally out. You get out. They out there waiting for you. Beat beat your ass. Go look it up, bro. Go Google. Go YouTube. Um, getting YouTube something about getting out of Cook County Jail, 26 in California, getting out. They got. They, I think, or they might have took them down, but they have videos of people getting out, and they'll be doing drive-bys on people getting out. They know you'll get out date. They come get you, like. Making Cook County Jail one of the largest, if not the largest, mental health care provider in the United States. This fact comes at a severe expense to taxpayers, as a general population inmate costs the county $143 daily, and housing of an inmate with special needs can be triple that. So even if the county intended to run a humane operation, the odds are unbelievably stacked against them. As I mentioned at the top of this video, the compound is huge. Hey, did I did I light? I mean, light. This is I like this. You did a little good job giving me some history because I have no idea. He's giving y'all the history, but I'm giving you the current situation. The, this is why they did that purge law, man, because it's, it's overpopulation. People can't make their bonds, um, so you sitting in there waiting for your court date for sometimes years. Like it seems like like you could do a you can have. What's one of them purge laws? Like, um, I can't remember what's on the exact purge law, but like some some of them like some of them make sense, some of them don't. But like, you could literally be waiting on bail for 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 a year. <laughs> you can your bail can be set. You can't make your bail. You'd be sitting there for a years a year waiting on your case. It's, Huge. It's, it's now sometimes I'm longer. going to have a look what's beyond the gates. Okay, the jail is broken up aside. into divisions, common areas, and administrative buildings. Let's start with division number one, which opened in 1929 and is the oldest building in the complex. As such, it's been recognized as a historic landmark. 
The unit is currently inactive, but in its time, it housed 1,250 male inmates. Aside it is the Historical Courthouse, Administration Building, and Division 18, which is home to males and females transitioning to their housing unit. Around 992 inmates can be held here at any given time. In 2013, the massive 979-bed residential treatment unit and diagnostic center opened to both men and women. Division number two. I'm trying to see if I can call one of my friends that was locked up in the county as hell so they can give y'all the real, real story of what be going on in there, but I don't know if they want to be in this video like that. Opened in 1955 and accommodates a capacity of 870 male inmates with medical or psychological issues. Just beyond division number two is the central kitchen. Division number eight, with a capacity of 1,000 beds, accommodates inmates of both genders, requiring special mental, surgical, or psychological care. Division 10 opened in 1992 for males with medical and acute mental care needs. Up to 768 inmates can be incarcerated here at any given time. Not far from that is the Sheriff's Office, which is also a historic building. Division 4 is the jail's general female population and opened in 1975 with a capacity of 704. This division stands in front of the famous pond, an area located near the jail's entrance which includes an ample open space where inmates are processed and assessed when they arrive. The nickname pond likely comes from the fact that the area is sometimes flooded during heavy rainstorms. The nickname has been used for many years and is well known among staff and inmates at the jail. We're bringing together the top fund managers and investors from a. I ain't gonna lie, this is the first commercial right there. W. The powerhouse on the jail's campus provides electricity, heating, and cooling of one of the largest jails in the United States. It was built in the early 20th century and has undergone several renovations and upgrades to keep it functioning effectively and efficiently. In recent years, the Cook County Sheriff's Office has also implemented several energy-saving measures to reduce the jail's carbon footprint and operating costs. This includes the installation of energy-efficient lighting and HVAC systems. Division 6 is a male disciplinary wing for young detainees. The building includes four living units known as West Care for drug treatment. Additionally, there is a school here. The division opened in 1972 and has a capacity of 992. Division 9 opened in 1992 and is the facility's maximum security. Okay, hold on. I got my boy. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel he gonna get y'all like how I was. Oh, I'm gonna ask him right now. Oh my God. All right, wait a minute. Security area where up to 1,056 male inmates are allowed out of their cells only one hour per day. Division 12 is one of the newer buildings in the jail complex. Having opened in 1995, this area has space for oh, 1,000. Hey, hey, I'm doing a video right now. I'm on the video. <laughs> so I'm doing this video about county jail, right? Yeah. They're giving the history. Can you tell them about county jail real quick? Like, tell them your experience. They they no, they can't see you. They can hear you, though. Uh, shit, when I was in county jail, the dick doctor was in there. So, like, when you first used to go in for intake, it used to be a line of niggas in that motherfucker, bro, and everybody got their dicks out, and the nigga used to have a Q-tip and shit, and this little Asian man, and he used to poke your shit. Poke, 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 <laughs> with, with, with no sense of anything. And then after you do that, they take you into a, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, they take you on the, into the back, like, to line up, and you got to be, like, naked as fuck, G. You standing next to transgenders, all type of shit, bro. They make you cough, bend over, all type of weird ass shit. And by the time when they done doing all that, they send your ass upstairs to the deck. And once you walk in that bitch, motherfuckers on your ass, like, hey, what you is? Oh, no, also you gang neutron, shit, right? Ass barbecue. Huh? <laughs> and said, and if you neutron your ass barbecue, you ain't getting no soap or no towel. 
So you like it's almost like you had to be affiliated in there. You gotta be affiliated, or your ass better be Muslim. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way you was getting out of there. Yeah, yeah county jail. One of the county jail fucked up, bro. Yeah, they ain't got the dick doctor no more though. Yeah, I'm watching this little documentary right now on it. They said like they they was doing some inhumane stuff on the intake. They, I think that's what they was talking about. Oh yeah, hell yeah, bro! I got like five checks from that shit, bro. I was 17. Oh yeah, they they they, they can't do that. Yeah, That's unconstitutional. Me, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, man. whoever that is, yeah, the county ain't no boy. That shit is dreadful. Yeah, all right, bro, I'm gonna hit you back. All right. I, I, I told y'all. Hey, he gave it to you the real like this is what y'all wanna know. <laughs> Thousand five hundred thirty six male inmates and is surrounded by its own independent fence. Not far from there are the Mental Health Transition Center and Supportive Release Center. Curiously, I also came across what appeared to be some kind of decrepit horse training arena between the various fenced off complexes. There's also a fascinating abandoned rail bridge near the river. Even the landscape here suggests a rich history, and with so many years having passed, the Cook County Jail has seen some very famous cases. Yeah, he was in there in 2007, my boy. So. Starting with the Chicago 7, a group of anti-Vietnam War activists arrested and charged with inciting a riot in 1968 at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. After their arrest, the Chicago 7 were held at Cook County Jail, recalling that conditions at the jail were notoriously bad, with overcrowding, inadequate food, medical care, and a general lack of sanitation. The jail was also known known for its harsh treatment of political prisoners, and the Chicago 7 were no exception. Despite their conditions, they remained defiant and determined to continue with their activism, even while locked up. They used their time in jail to organize protests and demonstrations, managing to communicate with their supporters on the outside, and ultimately becoming a symbol of resistance. Perhaps the most notable- Bro, I got so many friends that was in the county, bro. I could call like 25 people. <laughs> That's crazy. ...event occurred when Bobby Seale was gagged in the courtroom during the trial, with the judge ruling that the inmate was disturbing the proceedings. This incident sparked outrage with their supporters who called for justice for the Chicago 7. After a lengthy trial, they were eventually acquitted of most charges against them. Political inmates aside, it's also important to remember that many of the people locked up in Cook County deserve to be there, especially the monsters like John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy was an American serial killer who was con Chicago's most notable serial killer. convicted of the murder of 30... Let me, my bad, Des Plaines most serial killer most notable serial killer. We don't condone him. Three young men and boys in the 1970s. He spent time in Chicago's Cook County while awaiting trial for his heinous crimes. Gacy was arrested in December of 1978 and spent 14 months in the facility before his trial began. During his time in jail, he was held in a special unit for high profile prisoners and was given the nickname Pogo by other inmates, Weirdo. which was a reference to his clown costume and job as a children's entertainer. Gacy's I'm time- keeping a good eye on my daughter and everything she around, bro. Like, they, they, they're talking about high profile prisoners. When R. Kelly was in there, I'm thinking like, this was like two years ago when he was in there. Um, he gets no respect in there. He gets no respect in there. They don't care if you a singer, multi-million, billion, platinum, no. I heard, like, he got, um, somebody told me when he was in there that he was, something was going on, and he was talking, and one of the kings, this, the kings again, like, the kings, like, he hit him with a tray. Boom! <laughs> hit him in the tray, like, bro, we don't respect you, get away from us. Like, because he was talking, like, uh, he was like, oh, I'm Kells, I'm Kells. Boom! Boy, we don't care. The crime you did, you're not getting no respect in here. I'm telling you, it's rough in there. Even for R. Kelly, it's rough. Time in Cook County Jail was marked by several controversies, including his attempt to bribe a guard to smuggle in drugs and his complaints about the food and living conditions in jail. He also attempted to manipulate his fellow inmates by offering them money and gifts in exchange for their support. Despite his efforts, Gacy was Nobody supporting you, buddy. eventually found guilty of his crimes and sentenced to death. 
He was executed by lethal injection in 1994 at the Stateville Correctional Center in Crest Hill, Illinois. While Gacy's time in Cook County Jail was relatively brief, it remains a notable chapter in the history of the criminal justice. I don't even think Statesville Prison is still open. I think that's a, a, a um, I, c I could be wrong, um, but I think it's a, a, it's an attraction now. Like when Halloween, they do Statesville Prison Tour. Like it's, it's a scary thing or something. It's a system that eventually brought him to justice. Cook County Jail is widely known even from the former location on Hubbard Street, which was used in popular media for shows such as the musical Chicago, with the present site being shown in Chicago Fire, Better Call Saul. B.B. King's live Cook County Jail album featured recordings of a concert for inmates back in 1970. The jail was referenced in countless films, including the Blues Brothers. The thing that freaks me out about this story is knowing that you can be sent to a place like this without conviction, Meaning, in addition to the people who deserve to get locked up, there are people who do not deserve to be in there that are in there, that are getting turned into savages. You are so correct, my boy. You go in there, a normal person, for something you ain't even do, but you in there with a bunch of savages. They checking you. They not. I told y'all in the beginning. Then my boy just confirmed it. You could, when he said a neutron, that means you can't be neutral. You can't have no gang affiliation in here unless you're a Muslim, because the Muslims, they look after each other. They look after each other in there. So they got their own, you know what I'm saying? They got them, they got and BDs, GDs, Kings, Vice Lord, they got all of that in here. I'm telling you. And if you're a neutron, they're they not gonna give you no respect. <laughs> Others do find their way inside. Now, supposing some of you watching this have actually been inside the jail as an inmate or an employee, I'd love to hear your story. Please consider sharing them in the comment section below. Mm -mm, you got a whole reaction video out of me, buddy. <laughs> Shout out to all of the guys in there, man. Free the guys. Um, I hope y'all beat y'all cases, man. I hope everything going good in there. As good as possible. If you need me to put something on your books. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go reach out. Mm. Otherwise, I'd like to show you one more thing before we wrap up for today. This is the Joliet Correctional Center, oh, yeah. fictionally known as Fox River from the show Prison Break. This prison dates back to 1858, and its actual history, including its famous steam tunnels, is beyond disturbing. It's a museum now. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. This is very interesting. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs>